Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Connect Church Online. I am so grateful that you've decided to join us for worship today. Our community is better because you are here, um, because you are a part of it. Um, I hope you've all stayed warm this week, uh, wherever you are. I know it was a pretty cold uh, week and scary in a lot of ways, so I hope that you are warm and safe. Um, If you need help or prayers in any way, be sure to contact us here at the church office because we know several uh, our families have needed help throughout the week. Um, If there's any others, be sure to let us know so that we can do whatever we can uh, to make sure that everyone is cared for. As we jump into worship today, i got a couple of announcements for you. The first is that this is the first Sunday of Lent. Uh, You have hopefully received your Lenten devotional. Uh, This devotional is to be used every day as just a little prayer prayer guide uh, to enable you to walk through the season of Lent, uh, to fill up your your heart and your mind and allow God to to work in your heart. Um, The season of Lent has been around for a very long time. It's the 40 days leading up to Easter that we are called to spiritually prepare ourselves uh, for the arrival of Jesus. And so I encourage you uh, every day, uh, you would have received a small wooden cross. These crosses are made out of olive wood from Israel. I encourage you just to hold on to that. Do your devotional time. Spend a little bit of time with the Lord. Allow God to speak to you um, as we prepare ourselves for uh, the coming of Easter in the few weeks. Uh, Also, I want you to get on your calendar that March the 12th will be our outdoor movie night. Um, Outdoor movie night should be lots of fun. It's going to be a Friday evening. Uh, We're going to kind of have popcorn and and hang out. Uh, Our youth will be selling snacks for uh, camp for the upcoming summer. And our mission team is also going to be collecting uh, canned food for Project 66. Uh, this is a local ministry that feeds uh, food pan- uh, feeds uh, local families here in the Edmond area. And so I encourage you to bring some canned food, uh, come out and hang out with us on March 12th. Also pleased to announce that two days after the movie night on March 14th, uh, we are going to be returning to in-person worship here at Connect Church. And so um, if you are ready uh, to come back to in-person worship, we feel like we can do so safely at this point. Uh, we will continue to wear masks. We will continue to be distanced for uh, the time being to make sure that everyone is safe and whoever everyone who wants to come uh, is able to come and so on March the 14th 10 15 a.m. on Sunday morning uh, we would love to welcome you back and come and worship uh, with us and we hope you will join us um, for that other than that I am just glad that you were here Um, if you would like um, we are going to be now saying the things that we say here at Connect Church every week Uh, this has become an important part of our tradition for me and so wherever you are I, I encourage you to say these things out loud Um, And all over the place, even though we are apart physically, um, we are united in belief. So here we go. Here at Connect Church, our mission is to connect to God and connect to others. And our vision is to share the transforming power of Christ by creating a community set on making a difference in the world by living out Christ's three greats, the great commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The commandment of great compassion. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And while these are the things that unite us here at Connect Church, we are also united with Christians around the world, and so each week we join their voices in saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now as we jump into worship today, uh, I just want to invite you to pray with me. So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so very much for always being God, Uh, that even when there's a pandemic, even when there's cold, we can always know that we are not alone, that you are with us. And so God, we ask now that you would allow us for a moment to let go of some of the fear and the anxiety and be in your presence. Allow us to worship you, and we ask that you assure us that you are with us, that everything will be okay because we are not alone. God, help us, heal us, let us be together now. In your holy name we pray, amen.
from life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Connect Church Online. Once again, I am so grateful that you've decided to join us here today, uh, and I'm so glad uh, that you are here with us because this week has been cold. Um, but uh, the the sun is out, the the, uh, the snow is starting to melt, um, the future is looking bright, uh, people are beginning to be vaccinated more and more. Um, everything is going to be okay. You and I are turning a corner. Um, we are now in the season of Lent, and that's a very inappropriate season because Lent is the time where we prepare ourselves spiritually for coming out of the darkness as we get ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, a long time ago, whenever people celebrated Easter, they did it uh, as sort of Back to Life Festival. And so for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be talking about overcoming uh, things that defeat us, uh, moving away from stuff that is uh, difficult, hard, sad, and moving into uh, a new life and a new day, because that is where we are. I know many of us are still uh, in situations that aren't quite right, and we're not quite there yet, but we will be. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope. God is at work. Everything is going to be okay. We are moving to a place uh, that you and I can celebrate, uh, and it's going to be wonderful. Uh, the sermon series that we're going to be doing for the next couple of weeks is called Overcoming the Lies. And we're going to be talking about many of the lies that we believe that have a really detrimental impact on our life and how, as followers of Jesus Christ, God can help us overcome these lies so that we can be led to a more sort of blessed future. And so today, uh, the first lie that we're going to talk about is the lie of anxiety and worry. Uh, so many of us throughout this past year have been worried. Um, it was about this time uh, last year that things started to go a little bit haywire, and most of us have been walking around with just a kind of a lot of low-level worry all the time. And because we've been walking around with a lot of low-level worry all of the time, it has been a, a difficult thing. And that worry um, is, while legitimate, that we are facing some, some challenges, uh, that worry has had a detrimental impact in many ways on our spiritual health. And so today we're going to talk about the lie of anxiety and worry. Now, the lie is, is that anxiety and worry helps. For the most part, uh, the scripture doesn't have anything really good to say about anxiety and worry. On the contrary, the scripture has a lot of negative things to say about anxiety and worry. Now, I'm not against caution. Oftentimes, we face difficult things in our lives, and we have to make sure uh, that we are prepared, that we are dealing with difficult uh, circumstances with seriousness, that we are taking things seriously, uh, that we're preparing, uh, and that we're addressing things that need to be addressed. Uh, but worry, on the other hand, is something different. Um, worry is about uh, fretting over something that we cannot change or fretting over something uh, instead of doing the things that we need to to address the challenge. And when we do that, when we just wad ourselves up into a ball of fret and worry without allowing ourselves uh, to have hope without uh, doing the things that we need to do to overcome whatever challenges we face. Uh, when we get into that situation, that worry does not help and drive us on to action. Uh, that worry uh, diminishes us, and it makes whatever difficult situations that we have faced or whatever difficult situations that we're afraid of facing uh, even worse. And so I have often heard people, um, we just had a Bible study the other night uh, where we talked about this, I have often heard people uh, say the phrase, 
I am a worrier. I'm a worrisome person. I worry a lot. And that is one of the lies that we're going to talk about today. Because you are not a worrier. You are a person. (laughs) You are a creature of God, created by God to live in the light and to live in love and hope and peace and joy and pursue happiness. You are not made by God as a worrier. You're not, in your essence, a worrier. In your essence, you are a child of God made for joy and happiness. So wherever you are, um, I'm going to put something up on the screen and I want you to repeat after me. Are you ready? I need you to say this out loud. I do not have to be a worrier. As followers of Jesus Christ, we can choose to be followers of Jesus Christ. And if worry is detrimental to our spiritual health, as so much of the scripture says, we don't have to do that. Yes, I may worry sometimes, but I don't have to be an inherently worrisome person. I can make a choice to not be that anymore. Uh, One of the things that I've learned um, in recent years is that as followers of Jesus Christ, we are not only called to control our actions, we don't only have to be mindful of our actions and things that we do, we also need to be mindful of our thoughts. The things that we think, the things that we spend time uh, ruminating on, the things that we spend time rehearsing in our minds, all of that stuff is things that we need to be mindful of and to make sure that we are serving Christ faithfully and doing healthy things all of the time. It is important that we are not just intentional about the things that we do. It's also important that we are intentional about the things that we think. You and I can control our thoughts. God forgives all of us, renews our spirit, helps us move forward in more healthy ways. Uh, But God can also do that in our minds. This is from Romans 12, 2. It says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God is in the habit of not just renewing our hearts and our souls. God is in the habit of renewing our minds, of transforming the way that we think. And many times when we spend a bunch of energy, effort, time on worry, it is not healthy for us. And God wants to renew us. This means that we do not have to just decide... I'm a worrier. That is not something that you have to accept, and it's not something that you have to do. God can renew, transform your mind, just as God renews and transforms your soul. And so, for the rest of today, what we are going to talk about is some of the lessons that the Scripture teaches us about worry. Because it is a lie that you have to be a worrier. It is a lie that worrying helps. And I know many of us don't really think that worrying helps, but we believe it. (laughs) We believe somehow, even if we wouldn't say it out loud, we believe somehow that if we worry enough that that it will help. And it it just doesn't. And we have to choose instead to release our worry, to release our anxiety, and move forward faithfully with the Lord. And so, as I said, we're going to spend uh, the rest of today talking a little bit about worry and the things that we can do to rid ourselves uh, of unhealthy worry so that we can get rid of that lie of worry, that worry helps or that we have to be a worrier, and instead overcome that and live happier, healthier, more blessed lives. Once again, repeat after me, I do not have to be a worrier. I'm a child of God. And so here we go. We're going to talk about some of these things today. The first is, is that when we gain a godly perspective, we can be free from worrying about unimportant things. What the scripture teaches us is that often we spend energy and effort worried about losing things or gaining things that we don't need. Sometimes we lose perspective and we begin to care too much about things that God doesn't think that we should consider important. I have a a good friend of mine who works in the oil field and uh, a little while back, it's been a rough uh, to work in the oil field, and a little while back uh, he bought a a pretty nice uh, big home and it's a beautiful home, I was happy for him, Uh, but when the oil field uh, began to sort of decline, he was ended up being one of the people that was laid off in the community and it was a really unfortunate thing. Uh, He ended up finally finding another job which has been great, but this new job that he has now doesn't pay quite as well as his previous job in the oil field and he was very stressed all the time about losing 
losing his home. He had this big, beautiful home, uh, and all the time, every day, he was worried about losing it. And a couple of months ago, uh, he finally decided that, you know what, I don't need this house. I'm going to buy a smaller house. And so he put his big house on the market, and he sold it. He got a decent price for it. Uh, he bought a smaller home, and now his, his payments are much smaller and manageable, and he's more happy. The other day, I was talking to him, and he said, I was so worried and spent so much time and energy and effort worried about losing this thing that I didn't really need. My quality of life has not gone down. My family is well taken care of. We have everything that we need in this slightly smaller uh, and a little bit cheaper home. We are completely and perfectly provided for. And what I'm talking about is that sometimes we uh, get all worked up about trying to get things that we don't need and we worry and stress about losing this thing that we don't really need. And what God wants us to do is gain a more eternal perspective so that we are not stressed and worried and have great anxiety about having these things or losing these things that we don't necessarily need. Matthew chapter 6 teaches us, uh, this is Jesus speaking, it says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? So we can free ourselves from a lot of anxiety and worry by gaining an eternal perspective. There are many things that oftentimes we consider to be vitally important that God does not. God knows and tells us many times that our spiritual health uh, our happiness, our joy is not contingent upon certain things. Our spiritual health, our happiness, our joy is contingent upon um, the relationships that we have with each other and the relationships that we have with God and fulfilling the purpose and the calling that God has for our lives. And sometimes we forget that. And we begin to stress about things that we should not be stressing about. I am perfectly all right with uh, financial success and, and joy and, and doing these sorts of things. All of that is, is, is good and wonderful and, and absolutely fine. But what I don't like is when we end up putting ourselves in situations where we have worry and anxiety over gaining or losing things that we do not need. And sometimes our worry and anxiety is not about things of eternal significance. It's about things that are much less important. And so by gaining this eternal perspective, uh, God can help us be free from worry, as he does uh, with the birds of the air. So one of the other things that can really help us uh, get rid of worry is this amazing gift that God gives us. You see, gratitude and prayer are able to drive away worry. Sometimes it is very difficult to stop doing something, but instead it is much easier to start doing something. I, I know another friend of mine who, who a few years ago decided that she was going to stop saying negative things. And, and she was uh, always finding herself in situations where she was being pessimistic and, and negative and complaining and grumbling. And she realized one day that that wasn't healthy for her. And so she said, I'm going to stop saying negative things. And it was a really hard thing for her to do. It wasn't until she realized that if she paid more attention to saying positive things, then it was much easier to stop saying negative things. My point is, is that sometimes you and I have an easier time starting something than we do stopping something. So if we're trying to get rid of saying negative things, we can focus on saying positive things. Instead of trying to stop eating unhealthy things, we should start eating healthy things. We can often focus on forgiving instead of focusing on not being angry. And by taking things up and taking in good things in our life, it can free us from other things that are more negative. And what the scripture teaches us is that by taking up prayer and gratitude, we can be free of worry and anxiety. This is from Philippians 4. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. God cares for his children, so we do not worry. 
We exhale what we inhale. If we are taking in good things, we will give out good things. And so if you are a person who struggled over and over with worry and anxiety, the next time that you find out or you feel that worry beginning to take over your life, I want you instead to focus on prayer. Instead of being worrying, spend time praying. Instead of being worried about the things that you don't have, spend time being grateful for the things that you do have. And by taking up prayer and gratitude, the anxiety and worry can be driven out from our hearts and minds. Proverbs 12.25 says, Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Feeling ourselves with good words changes us. And so if you want to get rid of anxiety and worry, if you want to stop being a worrier uh, because it's affecting your spiritual and mental health, then I suggest that you spend more time praying and expressing gratitude for the ways that God has blessed you. Another way that we can get rid of worry, and the reason that we do not have to worry, is that we do not have to worry because we are not alone. It is amazing how much easier it is to get through life when we are not alone. Study after study has demonstrated and shown is that when we are walking through life and we have a partner and we face the same obstacles with that partner than we do alone, those obstacles are much less painful, much less scary, and we are able to overcome those things. And even if we do not have people in our lives that we can always count on in every circumstance, if you're one of those folks, then you always do have God. And no matter where we, what we face and where we go, we can know that we are not alone. And because we are not alone, we can be less anxious. This is from Joshua 1.9. It says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God is with us wherever we go. And so whatever obstacle, hardship, difficulty, thing that you may face in your life, you do not have to allow that thing to overwhelm you because God is with you. And what makes it even better that God is with us is because God is so strong and so capable, he can overcome things that we can't overcome on our own. Which brings me to my next point, is that we do not have to worry because we can handle more than we think when we are walking in God's strength. One of the things that causes me the most worry and anxiety is that something is going to happen in the future and I'm not going to be able to handle it. I'm not afraid of bad things happening. I know challenges will occur. I know bad things will happen. But what scares me is that whatever challenge or whatever bad thing comes before me, it's not the ones that I can handle. It's the ones that I can't. If a bad thing happens and I know how to handle it and I know what to do and I have the skill set and the knowledge to take care of it, no problem. It's a challenge, but I don't mind hard work. I can overcome it. But it's the things that I can't handle that scare me. And because God walks with us, because God is the one who walks with us hand in hand, and because God is stronger and more wise than we are, I don't have to be worried. You see, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what the scripture reminds us of is that even though I can't do all things, I can do all things when God is with me. If I am walking faithfully with God and I am doing the things that he is calling me to do, whatever challenges or hardships or difficulties I I might face, I will be able to overcome those things because God is with me. God also has a tendency to send other people into our lives that can walk alongside us and help us do the things that we need to do. Sometimes, I am often actually called to do things that I don't have the ability to do. But almost always, if it's something that God really wants me to do, God sends someone to help me. I'm going to show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. Hey everybody, I am now at the back of the sanctuary and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the anxiety and worry uh, that I have had. When this whole pandemic started about a year ago, I was nervous, um, not only because of the illness and all of that, I was also scared because... I realized we were going to have to go to church online, and it's not something that I had a ton of experience with. We've got this, all of this technology back here. There's a whole bundle of cords and a big mess everywhere, and I had no idea how to work any of it. And so we got online, and we did a little bit of research, but I want to show you my friend Sean. This is Sean Kittredge. Sean is an artist. 
uh, and a computer programmer, and he was sent by God uh, to help us figure all these sorts of things out. And so my point is, is that oftentimes when we are worried and anxiety that we are not going to have the skills to do the things that God is calling us to do, that we are not going to have the ability to overcome the things that God is calling us to overcome, it's always really helpful and important to know that God doesn't send us out alone. Uh, God has a tendency uh, to send people into our lives uh, that can help us. Look how, look how happy, happy he is. <laughs> and so I just want to encourage you and remind you um, that you're not alone, that God always um, seems to give us the things that we need to do the things that he's calling us to do. There is no challenge that God is calling me to overcome that God will not give me the strength I need to overcome it. God always gives us what we need to do the things that we need to do when we are responding to the calling that God has for us. And if we are not responding to the calling that God has for us, we need to go a different direction anyway. And so life sometimes is not easy. It's challenging, difficult, painful at times, requires hard work, sweat, But when we go forward and face those challenges and overcome those challenges, as long as we are faithfully doing the things that God calls us to do, God will always and has always given his people the strength to do more than they can do on their own. Sometimes through sending other people into our lives, sometimes through miraculous intervention in our own hearts, sometimes by knocking down walls in, in wild and unpredictable ways. But God has always and will always have enabled people, his followers, to have more strength than they do on their own. And so the thing that you're afraid may happen in the future, the thing that you may be worried about, as long as you are walking faithfully with the direction that God is calling you to do, even if that thing that you're worried about does happen, you will have the strength to overcome it because God is with you. So many times in my life, I've been so worried about something happening, and then it does. And when it does, I am still able to do the things that God has called me to do. I am still able to overcome it, not because I'm awesome, but because God is with me. Through God's strength, worry has no power because no matter what obstacles we may face, God helps us overcome these things. And so I breathe peace, not worry. The next thing is that you do not have to worry because you don't always need tomorrow's answers today. Matthew 6.34 says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Life happens just a little bit at a time. Every single day, God is at work in our lives. Uh, The more open we are to God's leanings, the more time we spend with God in Scripture, the more God is able to, to develop us and to teach us and to help us grow in maturity and peace and hope. But every day, whether we like it or not, God is at work in our lives. And oftentimes, you and I are going to face something in 10 years that if it happened today, we wouldn't be ready for. But in 10 years, we will be. You see, every day, God is at work giving us wisdom, uh, giving us grace, giving us experience, teaching us uh, and enabling us and preparing us uh, to do the things that God needs us to do in the future. Because even though God, even though we don't know what's happening in the future, God does. And so that terrible bad thing that's going to happen to me in 10 years, if that happened today, I may be devastated, but it's but it's not happening today. Today, I need to worry about the things that I'm facing today. Today, I need to be worrying about the challenges that I face today. Tomorrow has its own, and the day after that has its own. And every single day, God is working in my heart and in my mind and teaching and transforming me. And so someday, the challenge that I face will be completely different. And I will be completely different. And, and we believe, as followers of Jesus Christ, that every day God is at working in our, working in our hearts and our minds and in our lives so that in the future we'll be able to do the things that God needs us to do in the future. And so all of this is to say that one of the great lies of life, one of the most difficult things that we face in life is self-inflicted. We take a small problem and we amplify it by 10 with worry and anxiety. And the lie is, is that we think that is going to help. 
And the other lie is, is that sometimes that worry and anxiety, even though we know it's doing damage, we just say, well, I'm a worrier. That's just how I am. So, so here's the truth. The truth is, worry and an anxiety usually don't help. The truth is, is that you do not have to be a worrisome and anxious person. You can be a person of peace. And the scripture is full of advice that we've talked about today. The scripture is full of, of wisdom about how you and I can overcome that lie of worry, of how we can choose instead to lead lives of peace and faithfulness. And so today as we talk about the first lie, for those of you out there who consider yourselves to be worriers, for those of you out there who have at times in your life been overwhelmed by anxiety, I want to say this to you. It is a lie that that is the way it has to be. I know life is hard. I know that there's challenges that you have faced that I have not and will not have to. But I also know that God is stronger than all of those things. And you can do more and overcome more than you can possibly imagine because God is walking with you. So I encourage you today to overcome the lie of anxiety and worry. I encourage you today to know that God is with you. I encourage you today to walk in hope and peace instead of worry and fear. I encourage you today to inhale grace so that you can exhale grace. Inhale hope so that you can exhale hope. Don't worry because God is with you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now is the time in our worship service where I would like to offer you an opportunity to respond. To respond to the way that God may be working in your life. One of the, the great fears of all of us is that we won't have enough. Enough to provide, enough to do, enough to take care of ourselves, enough for the future. But what God tells us is that we can overcome that worry uh, about not having enough through generosity. And so each and every one of us are called by God to be faithful with our finances and to be generous. And so even though uh, I don't know what's going on in your life, I do know that God has called you uh, to live out generosity because God blesses us when we do that. And so right now, uh, I would encourage you to click on the link in the description of this video uh, and do your online giving and, and be a blessing to others. If you or your family are in a situation right now where you are in need of help, uh, be sure to contact us here in the church office. I know there's a lot of challenges uh, with the pandemic and the weather and, and, and different things going on, and we want to help you as a church, uh, but we need to know about it, so be sure to contact us if you need help. Uh, but for those of you who are in a place where you can be generous, where you can respond to God's call of generosity, um, I encourage you to do that now because it's through your gifts uh, that we're able to do the ministries that we do here to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to you every week to help our other families who are in need and to also just be in ministry to our community. So as you give now, may you be blessed as you bless others.
As we conclude today, I would like to give you an opportunity to receive Holy Communion. Uh, one of the best ways that you and I can be in the presence of God is to be obedient uh, in this act, that whenever we can, uh, to receive Holy Communion and know that through the mystery, mystery of faith, God's grace fills us up, that touches us, grants us, giving us things that we don't even know what to ask for. And so if you have the small single serving communion cups, I encourage uh, you to grab those now and we will prepare to receive communion together. So let us pray. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and of wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. Make us one with the one with each other, one with Christ, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever, Almighty Father. Amen. And now, together, even though we are apart physically, um, we will receive communion together. So I encourage you to do that now. you've now received Holy Communion, and I hope that you are assured that God's presence is with you, that God's grace is washing over you. And so as you go from this worship today, I encourage you to not be worried, because God is with you every day. God has washed away your sins. God has filled you up. God has given you peace. So go now in peace, because the Lord goes with you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.